Hey, St. John family, welcome to another week's children's worship service lesson. I hope you had a great week. I hope you were kind and helpful, and I hope you learned a lot. Before we get started, let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for allowing us this time to study your word. We pray that this lesson reminds us of the special gift that you've given us, that gift is salvation. So open our hearts and minds right now, remove any distractions. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, kids, so here's what I realized. Um, a couple weeks ago, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday or Easter. And because we did that at um, at church, you know, we it was a live um, worship service. I didn't actually teach an Easter lesson. And I want to do that. So for the next couple weeks, we're going we're going to learn that lesson. Okay? And you know what? It doesn't matter when we learn the story. It doesn't matter what time of the year we learn it. The bottom line is we need to learn it. And why? Because this story reminds us that whatever happens to us, whatever happens in life, we can still have hope. Hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. Now, sometimes life can go exactly the way we want it. But that isn't always the case, is it? Nope. You know, often the exact opposite happens. And we can end up getting frustrated. We can get sad. Um, we can get scared. That's why we need to remember that we need to choose hope. We need to trust that there's a bigger story. That God can bring something good even when it might seem at its darkest. I'm glad that we can always find hope in Jesus. You see in Psalms 31 and 24, it says, Be strong, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Never give up. You see, it's a good thing to put our hope in Jesus. He'll give us the strength when we need. Let's sing that loud. Can't see the sunlight, it's gonna be alright. I won't be afraid, no. When the waves are crashing and lightning is flashing, I'll still be standing. I won't be afraid, cause you light the dark, you fill my heart with courage. When I'm afraid, Jesus, you are my hope. I call your name, you keep me safe, your strength is perfect. I will trust.
Hey everyone, I have a question for you. Did you know that uh, people have been talking about Jesus for hundreds and hundreds of years before he was born? It's true. We can look back at the Old Testament and see how different prophets told about the coming Savior, a king who would come to save his people. You see, the prophet Zechariah said it this way. City of Zion, be full of joy. People of Jerusalem, shout. See, your king comes to you. He always does what is right. He has won the victory. He is humble and riding a donkey. He is sitting on a donkey's coat. This verse is why Palm Sunday is so important. God promised that he would send a king to rescue his people. The people had been waiting a long time. And at the time of Jesus, hundreds of years had passed since Zechariah said those words. By now, though, many people believed that Jesus was the one whom God had promised. They saw how he had healed the sick and, and performed miracles right before their eyes. And they had heard as Jesus taught with power and, and claimed to be God's son. But was it true? Was Jesus really the savior God had promised so long ago? I mean, it's clear that there was something very special about Jesus. After all, he had just raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. And more and more people not only followed Jesus around wherever he went, but they also believed that Jesus was a promised savior. And this did not make the religious leaders happy at all. I mean, the religious leaders could not bring themselves to believe that Jesus was the promised one. You know, they saw how everyone was starting to follow Jesus and believe in him. And they worried that they would start to lose their power unless they did something to stop him. They started to make plans to kill Jesus. So Jesus left and went to a village called Ephraim. Uh, it's near the desert. It was probably about a day's journey from Jerusalem. And he stayed there with his disciples. But they didn't stay long because it was almost time for the Passover feast. And this was a really special holiday that the people celebrated to remember how God had rescued them out of Egypt long ago. And everyone wondered, would Jesus go back to Jerusalem for the feast? Well, he did. He wasn't afraid of the danger. He knew, you know, it was all part of God's plan. And on the way to Jerusalem, he stopped in Bethany to see his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And that's where our story picks up today. So as I said, the feast of the Passover was approaching and Jesus uh, led the disciples on the long uphill route towards Jerusalem. And when they came to Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, Jesus spoke to his uh, disciples, instructing them uh, to go to the village just ahead. And uh, as you enter the village, you're going to find a colt. That's the colt is a, is a, is a foal of a donkey and you know young donkey and uh, the, the coat's going to be tied there and no one's ever ridden it before and if anyone asks you what you're doing tell them the lord needs it and will return it and the, the two disciples set off immediately and they found the young donkey outside in the street tied to a doorway and started to untie it and as they did so the coat's owner protested hey what are you doing Untying that coat. The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly, they replied, and the owners let the, them borrow the donkey. The two disciples led the coat back to Jesus, and they threw their coats on the young donkey. Uh, then Jesus sat on it, and many people spread their cloaks, you know, their robes, um, on the ground. They spread, they spread them on the ground for Jesus to ride over while others spread branches they had cut um, in the fields. And Jesus rode towards Jerusalem, fulfilling that prophet, Zechariah, you know, what, that I read about just a minute ago. Zechariah had written, uh, Rejoice greatly, daughter uh, Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Okay, and people ran ahead of Jesus shouting, Hosanna, the son of David. Hosanna means save. Okay, and others shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And many shouted, Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
Now, I told you those Pharisees were already afraid. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Hey, teacher, you need to rebuke your disciples. That means you need to tell them to be quiet. And Jesus, look at what Jesus' response. I tell you, replied Jesus, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. <laughs> and as they approached Jerusalem, Jesus looked over the city and wept over it. If only you understood that today would bring you peace, but what is happening is hidden from you, Jesus cried. The days are coming when your enemies will build an embankment, surround and trap you. They will dash you to the ground and not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God coming to you. And Jesus rode into the city. People rushed to find out what the commotion was about. Who is this? They asked. The crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Wow. So that first Palm Sunday was an exciting day. The people were overjoyed as they welcomed Jesus, their promised king. But Jesus didn't come to rule over them, at least not the way they were expecting. You know, he had a different mission. He had to come to Jerusalem to go to the cross. He had to come to make a way so that all of us could have a relationship with God that will last forever. He knew that he would have to die for our sins and then he would come back to life. And he would prove once and for all that he really is God's son. Of course, no one knew that at the time. The religious leaders refused to believe that Jesus is in fact the savior. And even the people who did believe in Jesus would not have expected things to go the way that they did over the next few days. When they saw Jesus get arrested and go to the cross, they completely lost hope. Things were about to get really dark for Jesus and his followers. But that was all part of God's plan. When things start to look dark or scary, when it's hard for you to remember to have hope, remember this. Whatever happens, remember, God keeps his promises. He does. Every time. He said he would send a savior and he did. He said that he'll always be with you and he absolutely will. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for this lesson. Um, it's, it's amazing to see how, how your promises came true in Jesus. Uh, you knew we needed a savior and you sent Jesus to make a way for us so we could have a relationship with you uh, that will last forever. Thank you. Help us remember to have hope in you. Even when life gets dark and scary, help us to trust you and celebrate all you're doing in our lives. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I'm glad God always keeps his promises. Unfortunately, we don't always keep ours, but God always keeps his. And when he says something will happen, it'll happen. When God promises that something is true, you know it's true. His promises might not come true exactly the way that we expect, but we can trust that they will, they will always come true. Remember, the bottom line, whatever happens, remember God keeps his promises. I mean, think about the amazing examples we can read about in the Bible. God promised Abraham that he would have a huge family. And even though Abraham was almost 75 at the time that he made this promise with zero kids. And that absolutely came true. What about Joseph? God gave Joseph a dream when he was young that showed him he would be a ruler when he grew up. Joseph's life wasn't easy, but... You know, after lots of twists and turns, he ended up as one of the most powerful officials in Egypt. And don't forget, God also has promises for you and me today. Jesus promised that he would always be with us. He said that if we put our faith in him, we have the promise of eternal life. And we know that we can trust him no matter what. Even when things happen that we don't understand. You can always put your hope in God because he can help you find light in the dark. So thank you for joining me this week. Remember that we can always put our hope and our trust in Jesus. Until I see you next time, I pray that God blesses you and your family, that you find ways, find experiences that always remind you that you can trust God no matter what, that he's always with us. 
and that he always keeps his promises. So until I see you next time, may God bless you. See the sunlight